three solutions of Kool-Aid um, of different concentrations. Take a look at your procedure. At each station you have three cups. They are already labeled for you, A, B, and C, because in each cup you're gonna make a different concentration of the Kool-Aid solution. So I'm gonna show you how to do number two, because number two's procedure is a little bit confusing if you just read through it. Um, this is gonna help us figure out the volume that this cup will hold. So for example, um, I could use a graduate cylinder to measure volume, but I don't want to pour water into this graduate cylinder that has uh, had other chemicals in it over the course of this year, even though we wash them. I don't want to pour water into this mixing cup that you are then going to take this mixing cup with Kool-Aid and pour it into the other cups to taste it. So I'm going to measure the volume of this cup in a backwards fashion. So it says fill one of the cups to the top with water. Instead of mixing it to the top, and when you're stirring it to mix the solution, you could have some spillage. I would recommend that you use the second ridge on the cup. When you get up close, you'll notice that the plastic cup has two ridges. I would use the second one down as a measuring line. So I'm gonna fill up the one cup, and you only have to do this once because all three cups that you're gonna be using are exactly the same. And I'm gonna fill it up exactly to that second ridge. Every solution I make, I am then going to put my Kool-Aid into the cup and fill it up with tap water to that ridge. That way I know I have the exact volume that I'm just measured at the beginning. So here's how you do this. Empty graduate cylinder. I am going to pour the water that's in this cup into the graduate cylinder. But I'm gonna to have to probably do this a few times. You'll see why. I'm gonna pour it until I reach that 100 milliliter line. Now I wanna be really accurate in my measuring. I'm kind of watching carefully as to what I'm doing. And I want that meniscus to be right at the 100 milliliter line. Now I know that this cup holds at least 100 milliliters, but there's more water in here. So I'm going to go, okay, 100, check that off. Keep that in the back of your mind. Pour the next amount up to that 100 milliliter line again. your meniscus is right at 100. There we go. So now that's 200 total milliliters in the cup, but there's still more. So I'm going to keep going until I've emptied the entire volume of water into the graduate cylinder so that I have a total measurement. i got to pay attention because I'm at the top. There's 300. And I've got just a little bit left. So now it's 300 plus about 60, 5, 6, 7, and now I have to be really careful. You want to measure your final amount of volume to the tenths place. So all of the lines in your graduate cylinder, remember, is a 1. So if this is at 67, I want to be exact. Is it right on 67? Then I'm going to say 67.0. Is it in between the 67 and the 68, let's say, then maybe give it a 0.5. So you want to kind of estimate that tenths place. So all of your volume measurements, which you just have one, I guess I should say, will have a tenths place. Okay, so for number two, your total volume, make sure you have a tenths place. Make a note of that. So I would then add my last amount, my 67.2 or whatever I say this is, to the other 300, so 367.2 milliliters. You'll each have a different amount because you're measuring your own cup. Now that amount goes for all three cups because all three of your cups have that same second ridge that you're going to use. Now some of you might have the other style of the plastic mixing cup. This particular one doesn't have a straight ridge at the top. The ridge is more curved. Um, the best way to use this, same exact technique. The only difference is, is when you're measuring, measure up the, to the top of the curve. And that way all of your measurements will stay consistent with your three cups. So a few groups do have the other style, okay? Okay, so now you're ready for part three. Now you can actually make your solutions. Um, you're gonna send somebody to the back, and if you take a look at what part three says, you're gonna use this data table as a guide to, so that you know how many grams of each, uh, or of the Kool-Aid you need to put in each cup, A, B, and C. So if you take a look, cup A, you're gonna need five grams. Now our scale measures to the hundredths place. So even though it says 5.0 there, ours could actually measure out 5.00 three sig figs. Um, here's the thing, I do not want you to take 20 minutes to get exactly 5.00.
If you get 5.02, you're good. Just make sure you record 5.02 and cross out 5.00. If you get exactly 5.00, then make sure you add a zero by 5.0 so that you have those three sig figs for your calculations. You need your A cup when you come to the back to get um, your Kool-Aid, put it on a scale, obviously press zero so that we don't have the mass of the cup, and then you can add scoops of Kool-Aid until you reach that five grams. Just remember to record the exact amount that is on the scale, um, whether it be 5.00 or 5.02, 0 0.5, whatever yours is. Same thing goes for the 15.0. Ours will measure out to 15.00, and same with the 30, 30.00 grams. So exactly what you measure is what you need to record in that first column of the data table for the amount of grams of solute. Keep in mind, the solute is sugar, or Kool-Aid in this case, and we're going to use the formula for sucrose, the C12H22O11. That will come in when you're finding the molar mass to convert from grams to moles. Okay, before you start, um, you're going to find up here at this front table three cups. These are your tasting cups, one for each of you. And there's also a popsicle stick. You're going to use this for mixing your solutions. So make sure you take these with you. All of this can be thrown away at the end when you're done with the lab. Okay. Last couple things, I do want to make a note that when you have the Kool-Aid powder in the cup and you're ready to add the water to make your final solution, um, for number four, if you take a look, it says add tap water to the top of the cup. Remember, you didn't measure your initial volume of the cup to the top. You measured it to that ridge. So when you fill it with tap water, you want to fill it with tap water to that ridge. Now what we found in my classes today that did the lab on the A day, um, the smaller spout, the one that shoots out water kind of real fast and skinny, that one kind of works better for filling up the cups if you have it turned on very low. All right, just because it has a slower stream and it's more direct, you can get exactly to that top ridge when you're um, filling it up with tap water. So that might be an option for you if you don't want to use the other faucet. You're going to use that popsicle stick that you have to stir it up, make sure it's completely dissolved and then you can taste it in your own little Dixie cup. Um, you're going to make observations. If you look at the data table, there's a place for observations. This can include how it tastes, how it looks in the cup. Um, if you will notice if you compare all three cups next to each other that they do look different, and obviously they're going to taste differently too, so those can all be included in your observations. When you're done with that, you can work on your calculations. If you look at the data table, you need to convert from grams to moles, in that second column, using the molar mass of the sucrose, the sugar, which is what we're considering the Kool-Aid to be. In the third column, where it says total volume in liters, that needs to be converted from number two. So you need to take the milliliters of solution and convert that to liters for your cup. That is obviously going to be the same for all three, because all three of your cups are the same volume. In the next column, where it says show molarity calculation, you do need to show your work. So the number of moles per liter of each solution. The next column says the molarity. That's where you're going to put your answer. And then the last column is for your observations. Good luck.